So you get a girl that reminds you of your mum, you gotta like cling on, you know, like as <laughs> <laughs> Freud would say, right? Yeah, it's a girl Freud. But I like the way you move me. I like the way you take me out here in the dark. You fool me, stuck in the days and I can't get out. So neuroplasticity is changing the framework of the brain, and mm -hmm. quite often the times I see people actually being able to complete it and do it and change is from trauma. Mm. On other occasions, they do have enlightened sort of experiences where they they have this goal and they reach for it. So how do you how do you get them to, to want to change? Or do they have to make that conscious choice themselves? Or how do you go I, about it? I think, yeah, they have to be open to it. Mm. I think the guys that come on program, they're already open enough to, to join the program. So um, I've never had the problem so much of trying to convince someone to be open to it. You know what I mean? Because they're always coming on program. Really? And I have noticed, like, yeah, like there's certain time, there's sort of certain windows where people's minds will open up to new things. And if you're not in that kind of window, it can be really difficult and almost not even worth your efforts trying to, like, show them a different way until they can either experience enough pain in their old way mm. <laughs> that, okay, it's time to try something else. I think that's generally what happens. Um, so, yeah, I think that, that would kind of be it. So they have, yeah, they have to have, make a conscious choice to do it, because you can't, yeah, block it. To be like, yeah, they've got to be open to it, uh, or at least willing to, to give it a go. And a lot of guys will be quite defensive about trying new things, because it, it can go against their old beliefs, and their old, and change is scary, right? So, mm. um, they will, I mean, you we just see guys on program who would come in, and they would, um, for a whole week, they would try and use the principles we teach as a technique. You know what I mean? Mm. Which goes completely against the principles. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it would take them a week to realize that this, or even sometimes longer, <laughs> that like, because their mind of like trying to control everything is it's still kind of there, you know what I mean? And mm. that's like one of the breakthroughs that we, we generally have to have with some of the guys who are like control freaks. Um, um, so I think, yeah, they've got, they've got to be open to it. They're, generally, there's, there's got to be enough pain in their life. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> <laughs> with the way they're currently doing things to be like okay fuck it I'm going to try something else uh, I think that's yeah. generally what, what happens yeah um, I've changed that I like, I've heard the analogy of this dog he, he goes out and he sits on the porch every day mm. and he's he, he loves it it's his favourite spot and he's just mm. that's like your personality you're used to it. <laughs> and then, then there's this little nail and he, he sits on the nail even though it's on his favourite spot he still sits there because mm. it's not enough pain yeah. for him to change his habit. Yeah. And then eventually yeah. he gets to a point where then he does. And it's strange that is that pain can create a positive change. Like a lot of people right now may be struggling or mentally confused and not sure what they want, but it could actually be the most valuable experience mm. you have for change to pivot. Because yeah. why would you change if you're content and happy with everything you've got? Like you're gonna stay with your lame habits. But what why do you think we we continue to have unhealthy habits like we know it's wrong for us we know we shouldn't um do it why do you think the brain encourages us to maintain that because it served a purpose at one point mm. and there's also i think parts of the habit that we actually like that we don't like to admit um some of the negative ones that we that we actually really like even though like logically oh this is really bad long term like we still get something out of it in the short term um, but I think a, a lot of them is because it serves a purpose at some time. Like like one I, I talked about last time was like having a habit of like extreme self doubt. Mm. You know what I mean? And when I was younger, this was I believe um, was a protection from me doing something extremely harmful because when I got really angry, I would flip out. You know, you know like I got cornered by my siblings or whatever, and I'd get really angry and I'd sometimes do something harmful back. So mm. I, I believe that this was, a lot of it was created through that, that the self-doubt would, would, would be protecting me from doing something extremely stupid, mm. extremely harmful. And then it just perpetuates on and into, into the rest of my life. Mm. And my brain has not identified that it was useful now and it's not useful anymore. It sure. hasn't made that distingu distinguish, you know? Mm. Um, I think like, so I think at some point they, they serve a purpose. A lot of the things we, we have are like protections for similar mm. reasons, like fear of rejection, it's like, you know, clinging on or neediness, you know, like clinging on to mummy, like don't leave me, don't leave me. <laughs> so you get a girl that reminds you of your mum, you gotta like cling on, you know, like as, <laughs> as Freud would say, right? Yeah, yeah. it's a good old Freud. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think this is true, like, um, 
And so yeah, you have a, and it served a purpose. Like you, if you didn't cling on, you might, I don't know, we're evolving. You might not have like the other sibling might have got in there, and you might have not get fed or so. I don't know. Like you know what I mean? Like it served a purpose at that moment to be really clingy and needy and and get attention, but then and you know seek all this attention from girls or from your mum. But then later in life, like with girls, it's, it doesn't really have a purpose anymore, and girls are just like, what the fuck? Like why are you being so needy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True. Um, so I think I think they serve the purpose generally at some point, like the deeper ones anyway. Um, and I think a lot of the other ones, like they come from that. Like the neediness behavior might, like when you get into a relationship, it might come there, but it also could even just come when you're in a club interacting with people. Like the, the, the deep core problem can surface in lots of different, lots of different areas.